How's it going everyone? It's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Realme 9 5G. Now, this is one of the Realme 9 series. So there's a 9, there's a 9 Pro, there's a 9 4G, all varying in screen sizes and what processor comes in it and all that kind of stuff. And depending on which region as well, you might get something different. But this one comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it and see what the device is about. Let's have a look at an overview, do some gaming and look at the camera as well. Let's go. Inside the box, you get everything you need to get started. There's a pack you're greeted with, and in this pack, you get a warranty card information, quick start guide, and underneath that, you have your silicone case, which you can use to keep the device nice and secure and safe. It can be a bit weird or awkward to put on, but once you get it on, it's nice and secure. It has a little lip over the screen as well, so it protects the screen to a certain extent. Inside that same package, you also get your SIM ejector tool, so keep that safe somewhere if you don't have one already. And then underneath that, we have your adapter, so your charging brick, and you also get a USB cable, so a USB-C, uh, sorry, a USB-A to USB-C cable, so you can use that for charging your device and for data transfer. The device has a screen protector pre-installed as well, so again, you don't have to go out and buy extra screen protector, and on the front, you can see that uh, front camera that's placed on the corner, just to the left of the display. This is the Sunrise Blue version, and when you shimmer it against different lights, shades you can see different colors just popping through it so let's take a look around the device itself on the right side we have the power button with a fingerprint a scanner integrated in there that works that works really well like so so if i just press that you can see that just unlocks the device very quickly so you don't even have to press the power button uh, for it to actually unlock the device it just unlocks like that straight away very reactive uh, very responsive and it also has face unlock as well so if you prefer to unlock it using your face uh, you can do so and then on the left side, we have your volume button. So it's not necessarily a volume rocker because they are segregated. So you have the top and the bottom there. And up top to that is where your SIM card tray goes. And what you notice is with this one, everything is not placed on one side. So power button is always on the right side, volume on the left. So all your fingers are involved here. So you won't be able to just hold it with one hand and just turn the volume on one side. With this one, you kind of have to like get used to using your finger to turn the volume up or use your second and to sort of turn the volume up and down. If you look at the bottom of the device, we have a USB-C port, we have a 3.5 mil headphone jack. There isn't a pair of headphones in the box, uh, strangely enough. We need to get your microphone there, your speaker grill, and if we look up top, we have another microphone up top so that we make sure that we get clear audio when making phone calls. On the back of the device, you can see, like I said, 50 megapixel main camera. We have a two megapixel depth sensing camera and a two megapixel macro camera. There's no ultra wide angle camera here, unfortunately. I do prefer a wide ultra wide angle camera and a telephoto lens, me personally, uh, but this one doesn't come with that at all. But other than that, this is a budget device or mid ranger. So it's, <laughs> it's something that you can sort of forgive the device for that. I love this metallic look in terms of the aluminum frame all around the device. It just gives it extra premium feel for what you're getting. Uh, which is really nice and the back just feels nice as well i have to say the vibrator motor in there is not the most premium i felt uh, it kind of just vibrates across the device it has this like extra uh, band into the the way it vibrates it doesn't feel as solid as other devices out there the higher end uh, devices more premium devices that cost a lot more than this does the 50 megapixel uh, is a samsung isocell uh, uh, sensor in there so that's the s5k jn1 to be exact um, yeah, I think it's the same as the one you get in the Moto G22. So if you ever used that before, you know exactly what to get, what you expect in this particular camera setup. And up front, we do have a 16 megapixel shooter uh, just in the corner there. Uh, but before we get any further on this, let's uh, actually have a tour through the software and see what you actually get in here. So you can see, just swipe through. Uh, you do get some bloatware already on there, like the Solitaire and Tile Master or whatever that is. Already bloatware installed on there. If you go into the more applications, there's PUBG Mobile already installed as well. I think you have to tap it to actually do a full installation, uh, but it's already there, which does, takes away from that full clean uh, vibe that you'd want from an Android device. You get that chin on the bottom of here as well, of the device, device display as well, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Um, one thing to bear in mind is there are different versions of the Realme 9 out there. There's the 9, there's the 9 Pro, there's the 9 Pro Plus, there's the 9 5G. <laughs> and this 5G version goes uh, with a 6.6 inch LCD display, unlike the 6.4 inch 4G model that gives you a super AMOLED display. Uh, so, 
But you do get full HD plus resolution on both, regardless of which one you get. And this 5G version will give you 120 hertz refresh rate as well. So you do get some trade-offs here and there, but uh, we'll see what else is there. So a quick tour of the software and the device. So if we go into uh, settings up top, and then we scroll down, we can start with uh, mobile network, so you can see what's there. So you've got dual SIM card set up there, so you can add two different SIM cards uh, on, on the device. Really good for those traveling a lot, so you can have different networks. You can have your home network and travel network on there. If we go into connection and sharing, uh, we can see what we've got as well. So again, the usual stuff, Bluetooth, personal hotspot, and so on. This works with Google Pay as well, if you want to use Google Pay on here. Uh, personalization, so things get a bit more serious now. Uh, if we go to personalization, you'll be able to change things like wallpaper, the colors, the font style, so you can change different colors like they call it trendy, beyond, etc. So they're using their own sort of user interface language. And if you go to font and display size, you can change things like your uh, real choice, Roboto, and etc. So play around with that and see what you prefer to have on your device. Home screen and lock screen gives you things like uh, changing the way that your home screen mode is. So you can have draw mode or standard mode. I'll leave it in draw mode just for this uh, video sake, just easier to navigate. And uh, you've got home screen layout, so you can change how many icons are on the screen animation speed, what happens when you swipe down, gestures, etc. If you go to display and brightness, you can see how bright this gets. It gets all the way there, which is pretty bright actually considering. We can go all the way down when you can barely see anything. You've got dark mode, light mode of, uh, available as well. Eye comfort mode is available, so again, useful for using it at night time, so it reduces blue light, which affects your eyes. You've got video coloring answer, so this will boost things a little bit from SDR to HDR, so I tend to always put that on, on this kind of devices. And screen refresh rate is where it gets interesting. So you can go from auto select or you can go to high uh, refresh rate, so 120 hertz. We can go standard, which gives you 60 hertz refresh rate. 120 hertz will be useful for when you're gaming. So if you, if you game a lot, or you want smooth uh, scrolling experience when you browse in the web, then stick it to high and you should be able to handle uh, everything else. Uh, there's no option here that I can see to change screen resolution. So let's go screen display. Nope, nothing there. So you'd have to stick to that full HD plus display with 120 hertz. So in case you're wondering, maybe you can save battery in other ways. That's not going to happen. Go to sound and uh, vibration. Again, like I said, the vibration, vibrator motor on here, the aptics, doesn't feel that nice. Uh, but uh, I believe you can turn it off completely here so you can leave it on or off because it can become annoying after a while because it doesn't feel that solid. Um, it just feels hollow. And then if we go to real sound technology, so you can have smart movie, game, music. So it tunes the sound that you hear on here based on what you're doing. I leave it on smart because I switch between game music and movies all the time. I don't want it set to one thing. So advanced settings, we don't have things like default recorder in here monitoring uh, for low latency voice feedback and professional reverberation effects. Uh, so you can set that up as well, but it's not something that I use. So I don't really mess uh, with those things in the settings. We go back out and we go all the way down to your privacy settings and you can see things like camera access, so uh, when this is off, all apps and services services uh, will not be able to access the, uh, the camera and microphone as well, which is great. So if you're not using Instagram, for example, Facebook won't be listening to you, you know, to start serving you silly ads uh, on the go. Uh, special features, we go in there as well. So you've got things like kids space, flexible windows. Flexible windows can be useful for your multitasking people out there. But again, it's not something that I use because the screen is just a good size for my hands. So I don't need to do anything like that. You've got gestures and uh, motions. So if you go in here, you can do things like swipe down with three fingers to take screenshots, like so. That takes a screenshot. You can do scrolling one or you can share it as well. Uh, we come back out. So you can set that up. We'll come back out. Thank you for saving that. We've got screen recording. And then we go into uh, system settings. We do things like your general stuff, like again, gestures and motions are there, screen recording, etc. So play around with that, see which ones uh, tickle your fancy and whatever you need to do. One thing I love about Android devices is when you go to about device, it tells you everything you need to know. For example, this is a Realme 95G. The storage space in it is 64 gigabytes internal storage, and you've got Qualcomm 695 5G octa core processor in there, and Realme UI version 3.0. The RAM is four gigabytes RAM, but you can also boost that using the storage, so RAM expansion, so we can add three gigabytes in there. So when things are running a bit slow, it gets boosted a little bit. This comes with Android 12 built in already, ready to go, which is great. I don't know much about how many updates you're going to be getting in the future and all that kind of information that people care about. Uh, so do bear that in mind when you're buying this in the UK. So you might want to check uh, with Realme first to see what, uh, how much updates, how many updates will be released, will be supported and how often this will be updated uh, on the go. 
you go to Realme Lab, there's something cool in there which is dual mode audio, which means you can listen to audio uh, via the headphone jack as well as Bluetooth paired with this as well. So if you're sharing visuals with someone, for example, on a flight with your partner and they're listening to, they want to watch the same movies, it means one, one person can connect via Bluetooth and the other person can possibly connect via 3.5mm headphone jack. Let's come back out completely and go into camera and see what we've got. So you've got your two times zoom there, digital zoom, and your one times there. There's no ultra wide angle lens here, so there's no uh, telephoto lens here, so we wouldn't be able to zoom that further uh, and still get good quality. Of course, there's that digital there that you can go up to six times, but you basically lose quality <laughs> in, uh, in that area there. So you've got HDR auto, you've got AI on as well, and then we can go into more settings here. We can do settings and we can see the options available. So we have flip selfie, shooting modes, high efficiency videos, quick launch, and so on. So there's not a lot going on in terms of settings in there. Um, one thing that you do have as well is retouch and filters. I turn that off because sometimes it's just a bit too much. And you've got different aspect ratios as well, uh, depending on what you want to shoot. Uh, we've got video, video options, tap to top. You've got 1080p and 720p options. There's no 4K video here or 8K or anything like that, but you can shoot um, when you shoot 720p at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 30 frames per second. Go into settings, you don't get much options there either, it's just the same settings again for both. And then you've got your ultra steady there so things can remain nice and steady. But as you can see there, it looks a bit fuzzy. So we'll shall put that to test eventually. We've got street photography, so it puts into 24mm lens and uh, really nice and quick. Got JPEG or RAW, so you can have it raw format, a bit like Pro but not pro. You've got 50 mil there as well, so you can do that. You can hold like so to focus, which is pretty cool. Focus distance, you can zoom in and out just by pressing and holding it and snap away and you're good to go. You've got night photography as well, so you've got night mode basically. And then if we go all the way across, you've got portrait mode available and your 50 megapixel ultra res uh, uh, pixel bin in mode. So if you wanna use that, it's there for you. If you go to more, we get more options as well, so like slow-mo, uh, movie mode, dual view video, so you can shoot yourself and the person in front of you. You've got ultra macro and pro, actual pro mode is available as well, so you can do things like your shutter speed and, and uh, aperture and ISO and white balance and so on. You've also got your little light uh, Instagram. You've also got Instagram there on the top corner, which is interesting for a budget device. Uh, but that's it basically for the camera and what you get. Actually, we didn't check the front-facing camera, see what that looks like, so we get to photo. Flip that around, wave away, you can see how it looks. It's not too bad, really good detail on my face there, on my skin as well, but uh, exposure is off the charts. I'm too tight my face, then it bring things, brings things back to normal, and you do get that filter that you can put there, like you can change your eye size, you can change your cheeks, make them bigger or smaller, <laughs> very interesting. Um, not something that I would use. Watching videos in here, the videos aren't too bad either. Colors looks really nice. The, the blacks in there looks great as well. It's not actually bad at all for LCD and what you get in here, Full HD+. Plus. Uh, the sound is not the best, as you can sort of hear. Yeah, it sounds very hollow. It doesn't have the full depth of what you'd get on higher end device. Again, I'm not knocking it. It's just what you can uh, expect to have if you do end up buying one of these. So yeah, it looks really good on viewing angles as well. It looks really nice. I think it's great. Uh, the colors look really nice there. There's red and the pink. That snake there looks really detailed. And this is a 1080p at 60 frames per second. There's no frames dropped there. As you can see, the greens look really nice. So yeah, I think the, cr the screen is definitely up there apart from that chin there. I hate that big chin. I don't think it, uh, it helps with the immers immersive uh, feel at all. When gaming, you can swipe out from the left. It's a little tab there, so you can select some options here, like performance mode. So you got game mode, balanced mode, or low power mode. Obviously, we're going to go to game mode to get the full performance available. You've got game focus mode as well, so things get turned off. As you can see, like a, a bunch of things, like alarms and notifications and stuff like that. You can turn those on. So let me show this again. Let's turn that on, and that will block those things. So you can focus on your gaming. And then if I exit that for a second, we we'll go back into that pop up. Got notifications there, you can quickly turn them on and off. So you got block, bullet notification, heads up notifications. Go back out, we scroll across here. You got screen recording, touch optimization, so we get faster touch response rates. So you can get you know swipe sensitivity and touch sensitivity there, and also some more options right at the bottom there. If we go back out, you got system status, so we can see 
how we're doing like frames per second, so 60 frames there. You can see how much GPU you're using and how much CPU you're using. So whilst we're loading this game right now, she's using 49%, 49% of CPU and 6%, going up to 10% now of the GPU, still at 60 frames per second. If we go back out, we select that again, see what else is here. We do have the option to orientate, to lock the orientation. We can also edit all these options as well. But what's really cool is you can see the, the phone temperature there, which is 35 degrees right now. And we've got battery level, which is 30% and what time, uh, how long I've been gaming for so far on this, which is cool. So you can see how long you've been in there for and you know how much battery has been used and all that stuff, which is cool. So that's what the game focus does. So we can just uh, tap off to come off that one. Let's load up uh, Call of Duty and see how that performs. So here we go. If you're wondering if you can game on the Realme 9 5G, yes, you can. Uh, performance wise, you can see that there's some uh, jodder every now and then. So it's not as fluid as, again, your high end uh, gaming devices or just a smartphone in general. So sometimes it does have this little stutter here and there, as you can see there. So whilst you're gaming, it stutters a little bit. It's doing 69, what, sorry, 59 frames per second using 50%, 51% of the GPU and 37% of the CPU itself. Uh, so it, it drops a little bit between 59 and 50 FPS. Um, and this is capable of 120 Hertz. Um, oh, the stutter is a lot and is not one that I think I can comfortably game with, but it is capable of gaming. If you can cope and uh, you're okay with that little bit of stutter here and there, then yes, go for it. But don't buy this expecting some competitive level of gaming on the go at all. It will keep you busy um, if you need something just to keep you going, if you're bored. Uh, but, you know, I'm almost getting killed there just because there's a bit of a stutter. So that's the gaming experience on the Realme 9 uh, 5G. It's not the best, could be better. Um, but yeah, that's what we have, but uh, it's there. Well, that's the device in a nutshell. Uh, pretty slick for uh, the price tag and this as an uh, entry-level device, mid-range. Let's not call it entry-level, this is mid-range. Um, so. It's, I don't know, I think it's a great device for the price tag. You do get 5,000 million power battery in there, 18 watt charger uh, in the box straight away to charge your device. I think it has everything you need to use this on daily basis, day to day without worrying about anything at all. Long battery life, 120 Hertz refresh, um, full HD plus display, um, all those LCD. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those tough ones because in today's market there are uh, so many other devices on the market in this sort of price range that might offer just a tad bit more. Uh, so do shop around and see what you prefer and what else is out there. But this is definitely a good option to consider if you have that sort of price, uh, sort of budget in, in mind for the phone to get, or you're just trying to buy this for someone as a present. This will make a really good present actually for someone, uh, someone's first phone, or maybe even your parents or something like that, I just need a phone, or as a second device, or like a travel device, this will make a really good option for that. And that's it for the Realme 9 5G in Stargaze White. I think I've been calling it a different color throughout the whole video, but it's actually the Stargaze White, which uh, looks really nice. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you get one of these? And uh, any qualms at all? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. If this is your first time around here, please do subscribe, smash the bell notification so you know every time I upload a new video upon the channel. And it does help me out a lot when you share it and like it. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.